It is the picture of abandonment. The old Metropolitan State Hospital in Waltham, only the administration building of this old mental hospital remains. Aside from the graffiti, there's not much in the way of signs or informational markers left here. In fact, even the graves are unmarked. Kevin Levin leads us out into the middle of the woods on this vast property, bringing us to a quiet, somber clearing. So we are at the Metfern Cemetery uh, in Waltham. This cemetery contains uh, the remains of roughly 300 former patients from uh, the Metropolitan State Hospital and the Walter E. Fernald School. The patients were buried in unmarked graves. Until 1979, the Metfern Cemetery was used by the nearby Fernald School and Met State, the resting place of last resort for those with nowhere else to go. What you see here, of course, are stones with either a C or a P and a number, and it sort of uh, tells you whether they were Catholic or Protestant. I think many of them were forgotten when they were admitted to the, their respective hospitals, and I think certainly in death, uh, for at least a second time, you see another layer of uh, forgetfulness, right? This didn't sit right with Levin or his students. A history teacher at Gann Academy, Levin's class is doing a research project on the Fernald School. When the class visited the cemetery, they were so moved, they decided to take action. Junior Beck Steinberg. One of the values of Judaism is to respect the dead. And so what we are trying to do is try to bring some dignity to those who never got any of that. The students researched the deceased, compiled biographies, and with the blessing of the state are creating three informational markers to be placed at the cemetery. Junior Nathan Lesser. For many people, I think this will be the first impression of like the Metford Cemetery when they see these markers. And that first impression for somebody who's just jogging along can be so powerful, just like it was for us. And I think that the more people we can give that experience to, the better. What responsibility, if any, do we have? For Levin, the project has suggested the magic of markers and their capacity to illuminate the darker corners of our past. These markers, in many cases, can be quite powerful because they are telling stories uh, that have, for whatever reason, have been ignored and, and set aside and forgotten. <laughs> And so this says we're right on top of it. When we last met up with J.W. Oker, he too was wandering around the woods looking for a headstone. Yep, there it is, a little stone out there. Oker is a connoisseur of curiosities. His website, Odd Things I've Seen. And of course we call it Otis, because why wouldn't we? Otis is a compendium of random peculiarities, natural, historic, artistic, pretty much all things weird and wonderful. Historical markers in unexpected places make a frequent appearance. We're literally talking about a rectangle of metal with some stamped words, you know. It's really mundane in itself, but this one piece of metal says, hey, this happened here, and then suddenly that changes their entire surroundings, just transforms it into like a moment of history. Take this traffic circle off I-93 in Medford. Profoundly dull and ordinary, unless you stop to read the writing on the rock. You would learn that this spot has a connection to one of the biggest national unsolved crimes the country's seen. A house once stood where this rotary is now, the home of Elizabeth Short. She left for LA, dying to become an actress, and ended up dead. It's the story of the Black Dahlia the most infamous unsolved murder in the history of America. On a lighter note, Medford is something of a musical mecca. On South Street, you'll find Grandfather's House, the destination of poet Lydia Maria Childs over the river and through the wood. Then there is some serious holiday cheer over in Medford Square. And supposedly, the story goes, a man named James Pierpont, who was a composer, uh, wrote Jingle Bells, the classic Christmas carol, Jingle Bells, right here. This optical shop was once Simpson's Tavern, birthplace of Jingle Bells, or was it? The best thing about the plaque, though, yeah, is it's probably false. You see, Savannah, Georgia also lays claim to Jingle Bells and has a plaque to prove it. 
Turns out Pierpont moved to Georgia, and that's when the song was copyrighted. James Pierpont definitely lived in Medford. He was definitely a composer. He definitely wrote Jingle Bells, but whether he wrote it here at the tavern, nobody knows. 